Hi. Now, before we start on this next part, what I want to do is just remind you what we've got so far. And also, as I said earlier, I believe it's so important to draw sketches. And certainly this is no exception. So just to recap, we've got our line L. We were told that we've got the points A and B on the line and uh, they have position vectors 10, 2, 3 and 8, 3, 4 respectively. Okay. We worked out also that the general position vector of any point given by R on this line L could be 10 minus 2 lambda, 2 plus lambda and 3 plus lambda. All right. Okay, I, J, K components there. So what we've got now is that we're told that the point C has position vector 3I plus 12J plus 3K and the point P lies on L. Given that the vector C to P is perpendicular to L, what we have to do is find the position vector of the point P. Okay, so if you haven't given this a go and you want to try it now. Just pause the video, come back when ready and I'll work through the work solution. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. Okay, so we've got our diagram here and I think what we need to do is first of all just update it. So let's just say we've got the point C first of all with position vector 3i plus 12j plus 3k. It doesn't matter where we put the point C, okay, as long as it's not on the line L. So let's just say we put C out over here somewhere, give ourselves a bit of room. Okay, so there's our point C and it's got position vector. Let's just go from here out to there. Okay, it has coordinates 3, 12 and 3. So making it have a column vector, a position vector of 3, 12, 3. Let's just squeeze that in there. Let's just move that out. So we've got 3, 12 and then 3. Okay, so that's the column vector. And we've got a point P that lies on L and we're given that C to P is perpendicular to L. So that would mean that if that's C, P would be say somewhere there. Remember this is an infinitely long line so it's going to carry on beyond this point here. Let's just extend that like so, okay? But this would be our point P. Now, let's say we give it uh, coordinates. Let's say it's x, y, z, x, y, z. So the position vector of P, that one there from the origin, okay? Let's just put an arrow on it. The position vector would then be x, y, z. So just put that in there, x, y, z. Okay, it's a bit cramped, the diagram, but hopefully you'll be able to manage with that. Now, where do we go from here? Well, let's just also add to this that this line across here, let's just do it in black, okay? That line there, we'll do a dotted line. That is perpendicular, okay? So we'll just put a right angle in there. So find the position vector of the point P. We've got to come up with X, Y, and Z. Well, the strategy for doing something like this is that we're going to work out what the vector C to P is. It doesn't matter if you work out P to C. Either way, it's going to be work exactly the same. But I'm going to go for C to P. Okay, we'll do that in a moment. And once I've got C to P, remember we worked out earlier the vector A to B. Let's just pop that in there, A to B. Okay, it was minus 2, 1, 1. All right, we got that vector A to B earlier in the question as being O to B minus O to A. So it came out as minus 2, 1, 1. And that vector is perpendicular to the vector CP. So I can use the scalar product, or some of you might know it as the dot product. And remember, if you get two vectors which are perpendicular, the dot product or scalar product will equal zero. 
and that will help us form some equations. We also know that the point P lies on the line L and so it satisfies this equation. So given the equations that we're going to build up we'll be able to do simultaneous equations and work out what X, Y and Z are going to be. Okay, so that's the strategy of how to solve this problem. So even if you are a bit stuck and you want to pause the video now, you might like to pause the video and then carry on with the problem. Okay, well let's just work from there, okay? So it's quite a long problem, I'm going to have to squeeze it in as well, okay? So we're going to go for the vector C to P, or you could do P to C, it makes no odds. I'm going to do C to P. And going from C to P is the same as going from O to P minus O to C, okay? Standard result. So therefore, if we stick with column vectors, okay, you don't have to, but uh, I'm going to go with column vectors. O to P then is going to be the column vector X, Y, Z. So we've got X, Y, Z. Put that in the column vector there. And then minus O to C. O to C as a column vector is 3, 12, 3. So we've got subtract 3, 12, 3. So what's that going to give us? Well, let's present it as one vector. It's going to be x minus 3 in the i direction, y minus 12 in the j direction, and z minus 3 in the k direction. So there's our column vector for c to p. Now we know that c to p dotted with minus 2, 1, 1, okay, is going to equal 0. Standard result for perpendicular vectors, okay? So we use that fact. So we'll say that C to P dotted with A to B, okay, must equal 0. So that therefore means that if we take C to P, x minus 3, which we'll write it in, okay, again, okay, so we've got x minus 3, y minus 12, and z minus 3. If we dot that now with the vector a to b, which we've got up here, okay, minus 2, 1, 1, it's got to come to 0. Now, I'm assuming that you're familiar with the scalar product or dot product. So, all we do is we multiply the corresponding component values together and then we sum those individual results. So, we get minus 2 times x minus 3. Okay, we'll just put it in its basic form at the moment, then we'll expand it out later. Minus 2 times x minus 3, then we plus. 1 times y minus 12. I'll put the 1 in, okay, just to show that I'm doing that at the moment, okay. And then plus this 1 times z minus 3. So 1 times z minus 3. And that equals the 0 there. And if we expand this out, we therefore have minus 2x plus 6 and we got plus 1y or just y, um, then minus 12, and then plus 1z or just simply z, and minus 3, and that equals 0. Now if I just simplify that, okay, we'll come down here. What we've got is minus 2x plus y plus z, and then I've got 6 minus 12, which is minus 6, minus another 3 is minus 9. So if I add 9 to both sides, I'm going to therefore have minus 2x plus y plus z equals 9. Okay, so I've got three unknowns, x, y, and z. So I need, at this stage, three equations to work them out, okay? So it looks like we're going to head towards our simultaneous equations, so I'm going to call that equation 1. So where do we get our other equations from? Well, we know that 
x, y, z is a point that lies on the line L. And any point that lies on the line L is going to satisfy the equation of the line. Okay, So what we've got then is we can let the position vector of any point R on the line be this particular point x, y, z. So we can say that x, y, z must equal 10 minus 2 lambda, 2 plus lambda, and 3 plus lambda. Okay, so let's put that in next. Okay, so we'll have also, we can say that R is the column vector x, y, z. So x, y, z. Okay, put that in as a column vector and it's going to equal the column vector 10 minus 2 lambda, 2 plus lambda and 3 plus lambda. Okay. The thing is we've now introduced lambda into our equations. So we've got the three unknowns x, y, z and lambda coming in. Four unknowns. So that means we require four equations. Well, we have got four equations. We've got the first one here. And what we've got now is that we can say that x must be equal to 10 minus 2 lambda. So that's equation 2. y would be equal to 2 plus lambda, equation 3. And z would equal 3 plus lambda, equation 4. So we'll just put this here that we're going to sub equations 2, 3 and equation 4 into equation 1. And if we do that, we therefore have minus 2 times x, x being 10 minus 2 lambda, 10 minus 2 lambda. And then we've got plus y, so that's going to be plus the 2 plus lambda. And then we've got plus z, and z was 3 plus lambda. And we can see that that equals 9. Now, if we work this out, we've got, as far as the lambda terms go, we've got minus 2 times minus 2 lambda. That's going to be 4 lambda. Plus this lambda is 5 lambda. Plus another lambda there is 6 lambda. So we've got 6 lambda. Now, if we look at the constants, we've got minus 20 here. Plus 2, so that's minus 18. Plus 3. So that's minus 15. And then if I add 15 to both sides, 9 plus 15 gives us 24. And so if I divide both sides by 6, it follows that 24 divided by 6 gives us 4. Lambda must equal 4. And so we're asked for the position vector of P, that's going to be X, Y, and Z. And all we've got to do is substitute lambda equals 4 back into these equations 2, 3, and 4. Okay, so I'm going to say that when lambda equals 4, O to P must be the vector. Well, we'll just work it out now. O to P must be, for X, it must be 10 minus 2 times 4, that's 8. 10 minus 8 is going to give us 2. And then for the I component, which will be 2 plus lambda, 2 plus 4, that's going to be 6. And then for the K component, it will be 3 plus lambda, 3 plus 4, which is 7. Okay? So... The vector O to P then, the position vector of the point P, is 2, 6, 7. Or you could write it as 2i okay, plus 6j plus 7k. It's up to you. All right? But there you have it. And actually, from a, the point of a sketch, it's not bad, actually, because just to point out that if we look at where... A, B is, okay, we're told that if we do go up to A and do apparently four lots of the vector A to B, 
it will take us to the point P. And that's quite a coincidence that the sketch makes it look pretty reasonable. But I'll just show you then. Okay, you go up to there and then you move four of those vectors. There's one, takes you to B, two, three, and then, okay, I'm a little bit out, but okay, just to give you an idea anyway. I hope it gives you an idea. So there you go, O to P.